This is the Election Bureau. Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom on City TV. We are also live on DSTV Channel 363. My name is Premier Dunyami. And my name is Bobier Osse. Coming up. Twenty bodies retrieved so far under the rubble of collapsed church building at Achimbatabi in the eastern region. Two more bodies have been recovered and confirmed dead at the Adan Government Hospital. This has brought the death toll to 20. Parliament suspends consideration of the public universities bill from the House. That bill was not necessary because it was going to stifle the freedom of uh, uh, the universities. Yeah, so academic freedom will be stifled. So government should withdraw it. Pokwasi interchange worker strike over delay in increasing wages. We are dying for an increment. Yes, yes. So the increment is one. And also, the condition of the work, you know, you know, they have to protect us. You see, we need, we need a lot of protection. And later on, Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari calls on protesting youth to suspend further protest. I therefore call on our youth to discontinue the street protests and constructively engage government in finding solutions. Now in our first story, 20 bodies have so far been retrieved from under the rubble of the collapsed church building at Achim Batabi in the eastern region. The building came down on Tuesday afternoon after a prayer session by church members. Now rescue efforts are underway for possible survivors. Here's a report on the rescue exercise by City News' Neil Ni Amate Kanaku. The rescue operation which was suspended last night due to poor visibility, resumed in the early hours of Thursday. Personnel from NADMO, the 48th Engineers Regiment, Achaso Jungle Warfare, the Ambulance Service, Fire Service, the Police Service, including volunteers from various road construction firms, joined the search for more bodies. As at 6 p.m., 20 bodies had been retrieved. Richard Amuete, Director for Inspectorate at the National Disaster Management Organization briefed the press in the morning about the rescue operation. Since our last update, two more bodies have been recovered and confirmed dead at the Adan Government Hospital. This has brought the death toll to 20. Nine male, 11 female. He says, Lack of data and information continue to hamper the work. Information is our major challenge. We have taken a decision to work throughout the night because we don't have information as to the numbers of persons we are searching for. So we have decided to work and search every rubble until the last human being is rescued or the last body is recovered. He further appealed to those who have still not seen their relatives to report at the information desk set by the rescue team at the site. The commanding officer of the 48th Engineers Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Kwame Mfum, also spoke about the slow pace of the exercise. The work seems to have slowed because we cannot verify or ascertain the exact number of people trapped in there. So we have to painstakingly clear the rubbles to be able to retrieve those trapped in. Uh, it is hoped that by close of day, we'll be able to tell you what we've been able to discover as yet. For those who are yet to set eyes on their relatives, they continue to troop to the site to make inquiries. While others who have lost their relatives are devastated. Near Coastal Mansu Station, 
Out of the eight survivors who were sent to the Achimodan government hospital, six have been treated and discharged, whilst one person has been transferred to the St. Joseph Hospital in Koforidia for further treatment. Now away from that, workers on the Pukwase interchange in Accra have laid down their tools to demand for an increment in their daily wages. Now according to them, their paymasters must increase their 20 cities, 20 pesos daily wage by 75% immediately. City News' Philip Nilate has more in this report. The leadership of the branch union of the Ghana Trade Union Congress, Zume Engineering, tabled four concerns affecting their members. They include salary increment, employment procedure, time lost beyond the control of both parties, and harassment at the workplace. Secretary of the Workers' Union, Evans Jima, said his members will not return to work until their concerns are addressed. And you know, we are dying for an increment. Yes, yes. So the increment is one... And also, the condition of the work, you know, you know, they have to protect us. You see, we need, we need a lot of protection. Where we go to, now, you see, it's, it's about to finish. I cannot even talk for the consultant and other people. But for all you know, we are about to finish. And for checkups and other things, we have, we have not been taking us to. So maybe, let's say, for instance, by December, the worker will live here. He is going home with sickness. Yes. Because this money cannot be saved. How much increment do you want? Now, 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 now we've been writing here 75%. Good. This is what we've been putting here. No, 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 we know no, work. No, we know no, work. No, no, so no, this is this no, is all like a strike sure. that we, we we're going to fight with each other with the administration. But this is a sit down strike. Yeah, 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 it's a sit down strike. Good, good, good. See, and so, do you want this issue resolved? Yes. We, we are giving them. Uh, I will I will not I will not give them a day. We, we will do this today. Tomorrow it is going to be continued. Yeah, yeah. So they will come to our. Uh, they will solve the, uh, the the problem before we stop this. Chairman of the Workers Union. Michael Chinto says all attempts to get their concerns addressed by management of the Pokwasa Interchange project have fallen on deaf ears, hence their action. We had a couple of meetings with the management and the management also said we first give them a letter. Uh, we give a, a couple of letters. We gave two letters to uh, the, the, the mother company. And the mother company refused to call. That's a, who is the mother company? The mother company is the Zomi. Zomi? Yes. And they refused to call. And we gave a, we gave a letter to our main contractor, uh, the one we are working with. And he called us. And he called the TUC. That's uh, the TUC to come and uh, witness them. When the TUC came, they said that uh, we should pass through the, the correct channel. And then we, we, we also brought the issue to the workers. And the workers said, they are tired of following the channel, the channel, the channel. All the time, they said, follow the process, follow the process. The process will never come to. Before they will arrive, the work will go to an end. They will not take anything to, uh, to, to, their, to their house. Resident engineer for the project, engineer Kwabena Bimpong, immediately called for a meeting to find a lasting solution to the problem. When a situation like this comes up, I come in to try and you know, resolve it. So what I want them to know is that, and for the country to know is that, yes, I know that we want to deliver this road by the end of November. So it's time for agitation for more money. But I believe that it is important that we judge all instead of resolving to things like this. After several hours of trying to reach a mutual agreement with the leadership of the Workers' Union, leaders of Zome Engineering and officials from TUC, only two of the concerns were resolved. The demand for a 75% increment in their daily wage was not approved. 
Engineer Bimpon says work on the project will be affected if the workers maintain their stance. Surely if they continue with the action, it is going to cause every day you know, that they don't go to work, it's, it's a day lost. You know, it's a day lost. And we have a very tight schedule. And again, this is also one of their challenges because we are working seven days a week. In certain times, we are work, you know, in the, in the night. And um, they expect that they will be given commensurate, you know, payments. But as I mentioned to you, the payments that they are receiving is all in accordance with the collective bidding agreement that they have signed to with the uh, trade union but congress asking, how is this going to affect no, it's going to affect it's going to affect the work but then at, at this moment i cannot say it's going to affect it by one day because one day loss does not necessarily mean that we are going to lose one day it could be more or it could be less away from that the ghana national petroleum tanker drivers union has declared an indefinite strike effective thursday october 22 2020 now, the tanker drivers say the strike is as a result of failure on the part of the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, to heed to some agreements reached by both parties. Now, they, the group says the action will continue until their demands are met. City News' Elvis Washington has more in this report. The Tanker Drivers Union on Monday held a press conference at its national headquarters in Tema where it issued a five-point petition to be addressed by the National Petroleum Authority. They thus gave a 48-hour ultimatum to the government and the NPA to address their concerns or they will embark on an industrial action. A day after the timeline expired, the drivers have laid down their tools by declaring a full-blown strike. Scores of drivers who had gathered at the premises of Chase Petroleum in Tema failed to load their tankers. They told City News they are not ready to work until the NPA tackles their concerns. It's not about any problem. It's just a matter of our big men went over yesterday with the elders at NPA and then they had a conversation. Now what we need is the approval. We just need the letter. They should come out with the letter, then we'll start work. If the letter is here right now, we are, we are beginning. That letter, approval of everything, like based on our payments, our NPA, like when you load, we're facing difficulties when discharging, we're facing difficulties on temperature. You know, mostly when you load, temperature do rise, it do comes down. So we are just focusing on that asset. Um, the reason why we are not working today is we are fighting for our payment because we will, let, we will work and at the, no, at the end of the day, they, they will not even pay our salary to us. That's why we are doing demonstration. The national chairman of the Ghana National Petroleum Tanker Drivers Union, George Nyaonu, says although they are ready to reason with the NPA for a win-win situation, the NPA board is not ready to do the needful, hence the strike. I think uh, three days ago, we, we released a press statement concerning our challenges, yes, which we gave ultimatum to the president. Uh, yesterday we were called emergency for an emergency call to address the issue. So we went, as a law-abiding people, we went and the issues were addressed. And they told us all that the challenges that we brought before them, they accepted it. So they will work on it. But because they disappointed us from 2017, we told them we agree. We are law-abiding people of this country. We want to serve the nation, which we are already serving. So we expect a document from them, all right, based on what they said. So that from the meeting, I can also show it to the drivers today who sent me, so that I will also be free. As the drivers chanted, a team of police personnel was deployed to the area to ensure law and order. But this angered some of the drivers. I was so surprised that in the tanker petroleum industry, at the depot, that arms will be used against tanker drivers. Fire arms. Fire arms Fire. will be used against tanker drivers who cast the product and supply. Be all because we are fighting for a, 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 a transit losses which lead us not to get our salaries. We cross over to the western region now where former president John Dramani Mahama has assured the chiefs and people of Mpoho of better roads under his leadership. 
Now, the NDC's flag bearer, who has been campaigning in the western region, was received at Mpoho by a mammoth crowd. Addressing the people from his vehicle, the former president sympathized with them over their deteriorated road and promised to fix it when he received a nod to be president again. Residents in the greater Kumasi area of the Ashanti region have expressed worry over the increasing concerns about the growing insecurity in the region following two shooting incidents recorded this week. Now, worried residents are thus calling on security agencies in the region to take immediate steps to halt the occurrences and further bring to book perpetrators of such heinous crimes. City News' Edward Opoma for reports. Residents in the Ashanti region, particularly those within the greater Kumasi area, have renewed calls for security agencies in the region to do more in ensuring their safety. Since the beginning of this year, the region has recorded a number of shooting incidents, out of which many of the victims have died. Most of these cases being investigated have not been fully resolved, as many of the perpetrators have not been apprehended. Worried residents are asking security agencies in the region to come up with innovative ways of addressing the issue. The residents have this week reiterated a call for authorities to improve general security in the region. This follows the killing of a young man at Atonsu in Asuka municipality and another shooting incident at Ahonjo Atinga Junction, where a Chinese national was shot and is currently in a critical condition receiving treatment. The police have since begun investigations into the two cases. Speaking at the recent media interaction, the Ashanti Regional Police Commander, COP Akwesi Mensa Duku, said the police had made significant gains towards apprehending criminals in the region. He also assured of adequate security arrangements in the region to ensure the safety of all. The recent shooting incident have caused residents to raise concerns again with respect to security in the region as they are not convinced with the work of the security agencies. Yeah, you know, it's disgusting and it's too appalling looking at the security system in the country. But I know when elections is approaching, this is how we hear. So we are calling the government to beef up security in the system so that the perpetrators of this uh, gruesome matter are always brought to book. Because yesterday, I closed very late and I was very scared because I live in a new site. Because it's election year, there are so many things going on, which is bad. Reacting to the recent violent crimes being recorded in the region, the Squad District Police Commander, Chief Superintendent Christopher Usun Pieni, who is leading a team to investigate a gruesome murder at Atonsu, said his outfit is determined to deal with perpetrators in order to deter others from engaging in similar acts. We we'll do our best to follow on any lead that we have from this investigation and, and ensure that such people are brought to book to be served as a deterrent to other people who might have done such an uh, act. Meanwhile, the Ashanti Regional Minister, who doubles as the chairman of the Regional Security Council, Simon Semensa, has assured that the security agencies in the region are putting measures in place to ensure the perpetrators of such crimes are apprehended. We are going to put security on very high alert, and we are going to do with those people who will not like us to sleep in this region. We want to make the region peaceful. During the election, people should be able to come out and vote and vote in their numbers and go back home safely. People should be able to go around doing their work without fear. 
Now, the police forensic expert, Superintendent Dr. Kofi Japong Fifa, who conducted the DNA test on the remains of the kidnapped Takwadi girls who were later declared dead, has told the Second D High Court that their forensic test could not determine the ages of the remains. Now, Superintendent Dr. Fifa revealed this during a cross examination of his witness account on the DNA result he submitted to the court as exhibit in the murder case against Sam Uduitok Wills and John Orji. Now, the counsel for Sam Uduitok Wills, George Isifuansa, who was not convinced by the outcome of the DNA result and how long they had been dead, spoke to City News. I, if, assuming he has given the age, the 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 the, 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 the suspected ages of the, the the victims, I mean the skulls that he, he analyzed, then we compare them to the facts that we have and the stated ages that the, the girls were supposed to be, the real ages given by the appearance or something like that. Then we compare these things to see whether these are the actual persons you are the, you are you are analyzing the, the the skulls that you are analyzing, whether it matches the persons who are missing. Since uh, he is the, he is an expert, uh, we may have an opportunity. Um, the witnesses are many. I mean, this is the seventeenth one. The, the witnesses are many, and so um, we may have an opportunity. Somebody may, may may come, and then we may have an opportunity to bring in some of these things that we couldn't get when he spoke. Uh -huh. So we may there's always an opportunity to do some of this. Parliament on Thursday suspended the consideration of the Public Universities Bill in the House. The bill, which seeks to harmonize the operations of public universities in the country, has generated controversy and criticism from stakeholders in the education sector. There is more in this report. According to the framers of the Public Universities Bill, it seeks to harmonize the finances, administration and governance structure of public universities. The bill in its current form gives government the power to appoint the majority of members of the university council. The council then has the power to appoint and fire public university officials. UTAG, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, among other groups, have criticized the intent and provisions of the bill. Peter Nochukotoy spoke to City News on what has necessitated the suspension of the consideration of the bill. And uh, we have recommended that in view of the criticism and the number of uh, petitions that we have received, it will be better for government to hold on with the uh, uh, passing of uh, the bill because there's the need still for greater consultation. So it will not feature as part of uh, the bills we are doing for this uh, meeting of uh, parliament. I have already uh, many a time said that uh, that bill was not necessary because it was going to stifle the freedom of uh, uh, the universities. Yeah, so academic freedom will be stifled. So government should withdraw it. So I've been of that position long ago. So if it does not go through, better for uh, government. The minority leader Harun Idrisu at a press briefing later on Thursday called on government to halt what he describes as the illegal charge of $150 at the Kotoka International Airport for COVID-19 testing. It is illegal, not just exploitative, it is unlawful. And we are demanding that even if you want, to what use is the money? We need to know. We can all decide as a country, if they come properly, to streamline it so that we can create a public health emergency fund and dedicate that money into that fund. But it cannot be done capriciously to borrow somebody's words or whimsically. Also, the National Population Council at a meeting to interact with the Parliamentary Caucus on Population and Development urged MPs to strengthen advocacy on issues related to population growth. Educating the people on family planning, etc., uh, is not working in the cultural setting. That is why we have come to seek your, your, your support. Because you are the mouthpieces, you are policy makers. Human beings in, in, in countries actually react to policy. I remember in 1974 70, when they said we should do the left hand drive, everybody did it. So policy would help us go on the right path. And that is why we are here for guidance and for support. You're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Still to come, President Akufado ends three-day tour of Volta region with a sword-cutting ceremony for waste recycling and composite plants. 
We'll bring you the details of his trip as well as other stories when we return from this break. Do stay with us. Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade, Kejebil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejebil, of the Takrade Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. What's popping? Brand new dramas. That's what. Ethan Hawke leads a group of freedom fighters in the daring battle to end slavery in Mnet's brand new historical miniseries. We're gonna start a revolution. And the rebellious daughter must step up and take the reins of a late father's criminal enterprise in Africa Magic's brand new local series. What do I do? What else is popping? Brand new pop-up channels. That's what's popping. We're serving up family dramas and intrigue galore in the beloved man on the new telenovelas channel. Citizens, we cannot allow this situation to go on. We're packing a punch with the kung fu adventures of the Chinese Odyssey on the brand new Kicks channel. And we're going crazy over arts and crafts with Cooksy on the new Zumu channel. So pop on over to DSTV for the best of brand new this month. It is Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? A new car, a vacation, or expand your business? Make your wish and have it come true in the 100 days of Christmas with a Republic Bank Christmas loan. The Republic Christmas loan is quick, easy, and so affordable with super fast turnaround time. Come into any of our branches nationwide. Call or WhatsApp 055-654-3212 or apply online via republicghana.com. Remember, wear your nose mask, stay safe. Republic Bank, we are the one for you. Since 2017, a new dawn is breaking in Ghana. The NPP is building the foundations for growth and transformation. We are curbing unemployment with new and decent jobs. Thanks to Nana, I've got a new job through NAPU. That is why I'm voting for him as the MPP. The promise of free SHS is now a reality. Through education, I have a brighter future. That's why I'm voting for Nana and the MPP. The future of our country is in the hands of a competent leader, a man you can trust. I trust Nana. This December, let's protect our progress. Let's give Nana four more to do more for you. 2020, 2020, four more for Nana. 
You've come a long way from where you started, and in that time, you've upgraded a lot. But have you upgraded your entertainment? When you upgrade to Go TV Max, everyone gets an upgrade. Football fans can up their game with La Liga and get all new action with the NBA and NFL on a brand new channel, ESPN. The kids will go crazy for the most popular kids' shows. And Family Night is sorted with blockbuster movies on TNT. Plus, our local celebrities will keep you connected to your continent, while our general entertainment channels will take you international. There's a whole lot for the whole family when you upgrade to GoTV Max. So make the move today and give your family an upgrade they'll love. Go TV, live it, love it. Welcome back from the break. Let's bring you some more stories. Now, one person has been confirmed dead, while four others have sustained injuries in an accident on the Anya Road in Accra. According to eyewitnesses, a tipper track with registration number GX903-2015 heading towards the central business district ran through about six vehicles and a motorcycle on the Awushi Anya stretch after failing to apply a brake. Now, there is more in this report by City News' Phyllis Na Lankailamte. The accident, which occurred between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. at Anya School Junction, resulted in the death of one person. Another person also sustained severe injuries, while three others sustained minor injuries. This was confirmed off record by the Motor Transport and Traffic Department commander at the Anya Police Station, ASP Stephen Achugamado. The accident involved seven cars and one motorbike. To ease traffic on the road, the vehicles were towed to the Anya police station. Here are some eyewitness accounts of the incident. First of all, it hit um, four by four. Now four by four, we jump, sit on another car. Now some motor driver to where they there. So the motor driver fall down. While another car pass in top. Where the other car to go stand on top. So now it be like three cars. It stand on one car. But plenty cars there. It be like the car. It hit the first one. The first two hit another one. Another one. So it be like it hit some seven cars also. The residents further complained that the traffic light at the Nya School Junction was not functioning properly, and that had caused many accidents. Traffic we now that me no me me nim de hanum because I'm a bad man we yo I'm a bad people you know you know I am a bad man we yo who de ene sa se ye so the traffic we nim a di ati supporti but this traffic we you know the work over two weeks if you do I'm ready over three days now you go spoil if you come do I'm I don't know they even if it's spiritual thing or whatever that one I don't know because if you do I'm today tomorrow you go spoil. In a related story, an accident at the Aveno traffic light involving a taxi and a Honda CRV resulted in the injury of a passenger in the taxi. The accident occurred around 3 p.m. According to an eyewitness account, the woman who sustained a cut above her eye was in the front seat of the car. On City News' arrival at the scene, the injured passenger had been rushed to a nearby hospital for treatment. The driver of the Honda CRV faulted the driver of the taxi for the accident. I waited till the, the light Cannot went to green. The emergency services. And I was, I was the first person in On the lane, so I have to go before other cars can move. So I started moving. The then a middle I moved into the middle, I saw this car. All the other cars were parking there. Call emergency Only the taxi after the countdown came out of all the cars, just hit the, uh, the, uh, the back tire of my the other side. President Takufado has ended his three-day tour of the Volta and Oti regions with a sword-cutting ceremony.
for waste recycling and composite plants in the Uti regional capital, Dambai. The president earlier in the day inspected the ongoing reconstruction of Kitikrachi town roads where he attended a deba of chiefs and people of Kitikrachi. The project manager for First Sky Construction Company, engineer Enoch Anyimado, says the 15-kilometer Kitikrachi town roads involve construction of drains, pavement works and asphalt overlay. What we are doing right now, what you just saw, is a recycling of the existing road pavement. This road has been worked on before, years ago, now it's deteriorated. So what we have brought here is a recycler. It recycles the existing pavement, then we shape it, compact it nicely, and we put the big ceiling on it. But what we are going to do, the project scope here is that we are going to improve the drainage system. The Kratchurura and president of the Uti Regional House of Chiefs, Nana Impra Besimuna III, praised the president for developmental projects initiated by his administration in the Uti enclave. What I have seen with my eyes today about the reconstruction or reshaping of our town roads, we do not need to talk anymore. In response to a request for a bridge over the Uti River, President Ekufuado said feasibility works will soon start for the construction of the bridge. <laughs> The president also urged the people of Kitikrachi and the Uti region to support the NPP in the upcoming election with a promise that they will never regret voting for the NPP. Now, for many years, the voter region has been uh, perceived to be a stronghold of the NDC. Now, in 2016, John Mahama won in all the constituencies there. However, the numbers for the NPP also improved, making it an interesting region to look out for ahead of this year's polls. Our head of research, Nathan Kwa, right here at City FM City TV, has been studying the electoral trends of that region and now joins me in the studio for a little discussion. Nathan, welcome to the City News Show. Thank you very much for, you, for having me. Now, for some you know, observers, uh, the trend in terms of voting in the voter region is a foregone conclusion, while others believe that uh, due to a number of things that have happened in you know, you know, recent uh, weeks or months, yeah. Uh, we should keep an eye on the region. Yeah. I mean, recently, uh, the case of the deployment of the military yeah. issues with the uh, voter registration exercise, complaints about roads. Um, from where you stand, what are the key factors that will be influencing how voters would, you know, uh, behave in, in this year's polls, both presidential and parliamentary? Well, you, you, you talked about the registration issue, and it, it, it set a lot of tongues wagging. In the, in the Volta region, or at least the lower part of the Volta region, some parts of the Uti yeah. region. People were not too happy with how that played out because of all the conversations surrounding that border closures. There were some talks about some people not being part of Ghana, so let's police the borders and all of that. It would definitely make some people very uncomfortable. I don't know how it will rub off the general voter population, but you do get the sense some people will be upset by it and it will show in how they vote. Some may not care about it, 
while others will look at the bread and butter issues, how much development has the region seen or that part of Ghana seen between 2016 and now when the MPP got into office. So I feel that there's that as well. There are issues of roads. Every now and again, people talk about roads. It's either the Eastern Corridor roads or the inner roads in the major cities, Ho, 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 Pando, Ketekrachi, as we saw in the report. So those are some of the things that will influence how people vote, how they perceive the the, the, the deployment there, what they make of the deployment roads. Of course, the Western Togoland issue may be in the minds of some people and they'll look at probably how government reacted. But generally, it will be a conversation on registration matters and, of course, development, whether or not my part of the region or your part of the region has seen development and how I want to appreciate that and how that will determine how I vote in that region. And now, when we look at the, 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 the voting trend yes. from 1992 to, yes. to 2016, we've seen about a 10% drop yes. in terms of you know, percentages. The NDC in 1992, there are about w was 90 over 90 plus, 90 plus percent. percent. Yes. In 2016, they did 81% uh, around the you presidential know, and parliamentary, they won 25 seats to the MPP's one. You know, yeah. yeah you, I, I'm sure you're going to ask about what will happen. Now, will there be an a massive overturn, it is unlikely yeah. that the region will definitely or will turn blue all of a sudden. Yeah. What the MPP can do, and if you listen to speeches granted by the, the speeches uh, given by the president, conversations that somebody like Samir Wuku, who's the youth organizer of the MPP, has been having, the plan is not to win the vote. If they win that, they'll be happy, but yeah. it is unlikely that they will win. The plan is to get more seats, especially on the parliamentary side. Mm -hmm. Now, the more seats you get, you saturate the, the you kind of dilute, sorry, yeah. the the NDC's influence, mm. and over time you can try to win the region. That's a project for the long term. What they can do in, in this election is target some areas. Already in, from the last election, they got Krachi. That, that was the singular seat they won. Can they get more? Possibly, because if you look at the demarcation now, there's Volta itself and there's the OT region. The yeah. president has been in the OT region. He's tried to sell them a few projects here and there. Those are places the MPP could influence the vote and get something. If you come down south to the main Volta region, it's of places like Ho Hoi, Pando, especially Pando, for example. There's an independent candidate in Pando. He could kind of affect the election. And mm. places where you have people like Peter Mewu, of course, he's been leading the charge in terms of the MPP's driving the voter regime. So the plan is not swing it from, blue to, from green to blue. That may take a little time. But the plan is to eat into the NDC's lead consistently while hoping that all other regions will still vote the way they did in 2016. Now, if that happens, the MPP could widen its winning margin or maintain its winning margin or at least have a margin to lead them to win. But in terms of looking at voter region critically, is that mm. it's an operation of let's just get more votes, let's just improve from one thousand or two thousand to five thousand, ten thousand, and beyond, and let's see what happens in the other regions. Now, the national organizer, Samuel, Samuel whose boss, like we just uh, yes. reported, yes. has been in the region commissioning some yes. projects, yes. Uh, and um, essentially, I guess, trying to win favor yes. you know, yes. with yes. the people. Now, some NDC sympathizers will say that in the last election, a lot of their people did not come out to vote. Yes. Now they are spread out across the country. Are you, do you feel that we might get some favorable shift for the NDC or we'll get those NDC sympathizers who did not come out, as they say, in 2016, coming out and voting their numbers to show up the numbers yeah, of the NDC? What is sure is that you will have a lot more people turning up to vote. Mm -hmm. That's a surety mm -hmm. because there were numbers that did not show up. And the NDC over time has tried to rework the system, rework the numbers, put themselves together. The other bit about the numbers is that the registration, now, if you look at it holistically, yeah. The voter region only got about 600 or so new voters. Yeah. Now, if you add the COVID factor that saw people not moving back to the voter region per se to go and register, it would mean that some of those votes that they would have accumulated in the voter region will be seen in other regions. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you have to look at those regions and say, maybe the NDC's numbers could go up there and that might add up to what they may constantly get in the voter region. Then you may have the NDC doing well in some other regions. Their numbers may probably drop in the voter region. But because there are displacements of people and the votes are coming in from different places, it could have an influence on how their numbers turn out. So the, the, the COVID bit, the redemarcation, people could not move, the new registration, it will bring a very interesting complexion to, to the NDC's drive, especially when you look at voter region and that, now that it's been split into two distinct regions, 
OT at the top, main voter at the south, and the people spread out in other places because they are itinerant workers, they are migrant workers, and how all these things will come together to influence the election in a few months. Uh, Nathan Kwa, uh, Head of Research here at CDFM and CDTV, thank you so much, thank uh, you so much for, for your insights you. on the voter region. Thank we'll you. definitely keep an eye on we that will, particular definitely. region region on the on your election bureau. Uh, moving on, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, has been installed as Afutu Pahini Jema in the Bono East region. Nanana Amponsa Jan the second, the Jema chief, installed Dr. Baumia when he visited them as part of his tour of the Bono East region. Speaking at Adeba, the traditional leader said the vice president has been monumental in the success of the Nana Ikufo Ado government. He stated that instilling the vice president as Ifutu Pahene is to honor the vice president for the good counsel he gives the president. <laughs> You're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Still to come, Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari calls on protesting youth to suspend further demonstrations. We have the details right here on City TV. Do stay with us. Last week, I received a message from Bet Planet. Come on, now we're in golden ticket. Now, then, Jay, Jay, say, I'm a Mercedes Benz. I'm going to go to the house. 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 Bet Planet. I'm going to go to the house. If you win, no one will like Bet Planet. My baby, hold it low. If you win, no one will like. Don't forget the balloons. Check. The DJ. Check. And the drinks. Listen, honey, I've got this party under control, okay? Daddy, <laughs> don't forget our birthday cake with the sparkly candles. Daddy, are you there? The parties are 4 p.m., honey. Don't be late. <laughs> With the all-new CowPay on the CowBank app and website, you don't have to worry about carrying cash. Just place your order with your favorite merchant and pay with a Visa or MasterCard, mobile money or CowBank account, or scan and pay. Visit the Play Store or App Store and download the CowBank app today. CowBank app. Forget to cash. CowBank. Forward. Hi, my name is Salamatu. Yes, these are both me. You see, before free SHS, my life could have taken two very different paths. The SHS path depended on how much money my parents had, what sacrifices they were willing to make, and whether they would send me or my little brother Isa to SHS. The other path is what would have become of me if there was no free SHS. But today, thanks to free SHS, my future is bright and promising. Congratulations, you have a name. It's a boy. 
Instead of depending on others, I will stand on my own feet and help my family. Free SHS is where my dreams for a better future and the dreams of thousands of young girls become a reality. Don't let NDC take it away from us. Vote for NPP and give all Ghanaian girls a chance for a better future. It's not long ago that things were normal. Good friends could meet for a good drink and share good times. <laughs> and then everything changed. And our bars, the center of our communities, all closed, sending us all indoors. But now, things are changing. Kakra, kakra. Small, small. We're getting our lives back. Obey ye. We'll get back to the way things were. Hey, mama. Hey, you want a drink? Yeah, man. It's time for us to rise up. Hey, you back. Oh, you As we look forward to making our bar safe, Guinness Ghana will invest 10 million CDs through the Union and Boom program to get our bar owners back on their feet. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. What's popping? Brand new dramas, that's what. Ethan Hawke leads a group of freedom fighters in the daring battle to end slavery in Mnet's brand new historical miniseries. We're gonna start a revolution. And the rebellious daughter must step up and take the reins of a late father's criminal enterprise in Africa Magic's brand new local series. What do I do? What else is popping? Brand new pop-up channels, that's what's popping. We're serving up family dramas and intrigue galore in the beloved man on the new telenovelas channel. Citizens, we cannot allow the situation to go on. We're packing a punch with the kung fu adventures of the Chinese Odyssey on the brand new Kicks channel. And we're going crazy over arts and crafts with Cooksey on the new Zumu channel. So pop on over to DSTV for the best of brand new this month. Hello again. The president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, has finally broken his silence days after protests by citizens turned violent, leaving dozens dead and others injured. Well, the president says his administration will ensure that liberty and freedom, as well as the human rights of Nigerian citizens, are protected to ensure stability. In an address to citizens, he said his government is committed to preserving the unity in the country and called on state security to stop the violence and bring back law and order in state experience and chaos. I would like to appeal to protesters to note and take advantage of the various well thought out initiatives of this administration designed to make their lives better and more meaningful and resist the temptation of being used by some subversive elements to cause chaos with the aim of truncating our nascent democracy. For you to do otherwise will amount to undermining national security and the law and order situation. Under no circumstances will this be tolerated. I therefore call on our youth to discontinue the street protests and constructively engage government in finding solutions. Your voice has been heard loud and clear, and we are responding. And I call on all Nigerians to go about their normal businesses and to enjoin security agencies to protect lives and properties of all law abiding citizens without doing harm to those they are meant to protect. Let me pay tribute to officers of the Nigeria Police Force who have tragically lost their lives in the line of duty. And that's how we wrap up. You've been watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Don't forget that our website, citynewsroom.com, has more news updates.
Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch City TV on DSTV Channel 363 and Go TV Channel 182. My name is Fumer Dinyami. And I am Bobier Osei. It's been a pleasure coming away.